All right, guys, so I think this might be the most interesting and unique microbrand watch I've checked out on the channel to date. And I've actually checked out some interesting and unique ones before, one of which I've actually got down here. So if you want to check out that and the others, I'll leave a link to the playlist up on the top and also down in the description. But getting back to this one, this is the MechExp MS1001. So yeah, it's a pretty unusual name, quite difficult to say as well, but there is actually some reasoning behind the name. So it actually stands for Mechanical Experience. But we'll talk about that in more detail once we actually get down into the review. Before we do that, I'll quickly just move the watch out of the way for a second, briefly show you the packaging and passing. So we've got the brand in there, as well as that logo above it as well. And we do actually get something else in there other than the watch, and that is this charger. Yep, you heard that right. This watch comes with a charger, but it is still mechanical. So the way it does this is that it's electromechanical, but we'll get into that when we talk about the movement in a little bit. But as you can see, it's a really unique looking watch. So I've not seen anything like this before, especially something like this that is still mechanical, albeit electromechanical. I'd be really interested to know if anyone has actually seen something similar to this. If you have, let me know down in the comments. So there's a few different versions of this available. I've got it with the yellow accents, but they have quite a few other colours as well, if you're not keen on this one. They also have this stainless steel case version, or if you're not keen on that, they also do it in PVD as well. Then when it comes to the straps, I've got it with the canvas and leather combination, but they also have a fluorine rubber option as well. But I went with this one because I like the matching colour stitching. So if you are keen on this overall design, you should be able to find one that you do like. But before we go into any more details on this, first of all let's go over the dimensions, because they're quite interesting too. You might be pleasantly surprised with these I think. So we've got a diameter of 36mm, thickness of 13.8, lug width of 22, and then the all important lug to lug is coming out of 48.1. So the diameter especially is smaller than I was expecting, so that was a nice pleasant surprise. In terms of the weight, on this canvas and leather strap, it's coming in at 88 grams. But now let's get on to the actual head of the watch, because this is where it gets really interesting. So obviously we've got that really interesting dial, get a closer look at that now. And you can see those kind of screw type sections with the hands on. In terms of the case shape, it's a really interesting unique one. So we've got that crown there, which is signed, that nice detailing on the side as well. Very flat, but with that compact lug to lug, still wears nicely. Really interesting sloped top of the case. And as I said before, this one is stainless steel, so we've got a mixture of brushing and polishing. All nicely done. And then flicking back around to the front, we've got that MechX branding on the front. Again, a little bit difficult to say. I think I would have personally preferred if they just called it MechX. Just get rid of the P, because it's a bit difficult to pronounce with that P on the end. Or at least for me anyway. So because I've got the yellow version, we've got those yellow numbers either side. So the hours are on the left, minutes are on the right. So the time currently is 5.25. It's pretty easy to read. In those increments of 5, anything in between can be a little bit difficult, but I tend to round it to the nearest 5 anyway. But it doesn't just tell the time this, it's actually got 5 different functions, so I'm going to go over all of them now. So first off, you're going to want to know how to set the time, so if you press the ground 4 times quickly, then it'll go down to the bottom, and then you can actually set this using the crown by turning it. So that's changing the hours, and then if you want to set it, just press it in again. Then do the same for the minutes. And then you can hear that mechanism ticking when you're doing that. And then once you've set that, press it again. So that is the time set then. And now you can see we've got it set to 10 past 2. So next up we've got a timer function. And you access that by pressing the ground three times quickly. And then both of those hands will drop down to the bottom, ready to use the timer. And then start it, just press the crown in. That starts off. And obviously to stop it again, you just press that crown again and it will stop. And then once you've finished using that, just press it one more time again, and it'll go back to showing the time. So another thing you can do with this, because it needs charging, how are you checking what the battery level is? So you do that by pressing the crown in twice quickly, and then the hour hand will move. So that's up to the eight, that is 80%. So it'll never go higher than 10 on that, which is basically 100. So again, nice and simple and really useful, and it resets after a few seconds, and again displays the time. So from fully charged, it will actually last up to 35 days, which I think is really impressive. But obviously you will need to charge it up eventually, and you do that using this very nice branded charging cable. So it's a flat braided one, and we've also got a nice little adapter on this, so it's either USB-A or USB-C, depending on what you need. I do appreciate they put that in the box, and it takes two to three hours to fully charge. 
but I've not had to do that yet because the battery is holding on really well. I've been messing around with it for quite a while now and I've managed to get it down to about 40%. Before I did this review, I charged it up for about 10-15 minutes, which as you saw, got it up to about 80%. The only minor gripe I have with this is that the magnet could be a little bit stronger. It can come off a little bit easily if you do knock it or anything. So I do really like the mechanism on this. As I say, I've not seen anything even remotely like it. This is actually a custom in-house movement. It definitely gives me that same feel of a mechanical watch. I think it's a really smart design the way they've done it. I imagine if they really wanted to, they could have made it silent so you wouldn't hear it at all. But that personally for me would take away a lot of what I actually really like about this watch. As I say, it has that mechanical feel, but it's definitely a unique experience. So I really do think that name is quite fitting. So before we talk about those other two functions that I haven't actually mentioned yet, first of all, let's check out whether we've got sapphire crystal on it on this. Using the trusty diamond selector 2. And yep, we have actually got Sapphire Crystal, which is a really nice bonus, because that's definitely going to be a custom piece, it's not going to be an off-the-shelf one, so it's not going to be cheap. But I definitely think a watch like this needs it though. But now let's get onto the loom and talk about that, because there is some interesting stuff going on here. So let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So you can see we've got loom on the hands, and also on those numbers as well. So, they're not applied. They are just printed, and it doesn't actually say on the website what the loom is they're actually using, but given the colour, I'd imagine it's some sort of C3. It doesn't last all that long really, but don't be worried, as this watch has got another little trick up its sleeve, one of those other five functions that I didn't mention earlier, we're going to talk about now. So, show you a bit closer, if we press this crown on the side just once, you'll see we have actually got a pretty impressive backlight. And I love the way it lights up everything, not just the numbers and the hands. Lights up that mechanism as well, so you can see that. It's just a really cool lock. And there's that much of it. I think it might actually charge up that loom on the numbers a bit too. So you definitely don't need to worry about that loom not being the best, because you've got that really impressive backlight. So you're probably thinking to yourself, that's still only four of those five functions I mentioned at the start. What is the fifth one? So I'll talk about that and show you that now. So the fifth function, the way you access it is by pressing and holding that crown down for four seconds and then you'll see that backlight starts flashing and that's when you know it's been activated so this is actually a sleep mode so you want to use this when you're asleep at night otherwise if you leave it on your bedside table or anything it's going to be clicking throughout the night and you'll hear it it's quite loud especially when it's on a table or something but during this sleep mode it will actually still track the time it just won't show it on the dial and then when you press it again to turn it off in the morning it will readjust to whatever time it needs to. When I first read about this in the instructions, because I did have to check it out to figure out all these different functions, now they all work, I didn't think I'd really need that. But I tried it one night without, or actually I forgot to actually try it. And it did actually wake me up. Granted that might be because I'm a pretty light sleeper, but it is good that they've added that function in there, so you can just put it in that sleep mode. So you're probably wondering to yourself now, how much is all this going to cost? It sounds like it's a pretty unique and bespoke watch. So, is that reflected in the price? So, it's coming in at $304, £227, and €272. Euros. And I personally think that's a really good price for such a unique watch. It's got that unique custom in house movement. It's also got that custom made sapphire crystal on it as well. The really distinctive case. It's not perfect. I might change one or two little things, but I'll talk about that now and also show it on wrist as well. And here it is on my 7 inch wrist. So I think it wears really surprisingly well. Considering the style of watch it is, with that unusual case, I was half expecting it to be way too big. Yeah, it's quite thick, but with that compact lug to lug, and that pretty small diameter as well, I think it wears really nicely on my 7 inch wrist. I don't think I'd be going any smaller. If you had a smaller than 7 inch wrist, it might be a bit too big. But 7 and above, I think it works really well. As I say, normally these more unusual kind of style watches tend to be on the larger side, but I think with this one, they've pretty much nailed it. And I just love the overall look of it. It's not like anything else I've ever checked out, and I just love the little details with the matching stitching colour and dial. That's why I opted for this one over the fluorine rubber strap. There's a real retro feel to this watch. Some are going to love it, and I think others are probably going to hate it. I don't think there's going to be too many people in the middle. When it comes to things I'd like to see changed, maybe, there's not many. 
as I said earlier, I'd like to see stronger magnets used on the charger, just so it stays on a bit more securely. I'd love it if perhaps they could try and shave a few mil off that thickness, although that probably would affect the battery life, so that doesn't really bother me too much. Having it last up to 35 days is a really good bonus, I think, so I can deal with a few more mil on the thickness. I probably would add some complaints about the loom, but because we've got that backlight, it's a non-issue, so I'm not really going to talk about that. So as you can see, I'm kind of struggling to find negatives with this watch. As I said before, I think for everything they've packed in, for such a unique watch, and for such a great price as well, I highly recommend it if you like this style. It's just something totally different, totally unique, and I'm really loving it. I find myself just playing with the different functions all the time, just to hear it moving around and going up and down and just that movement. It's just a really satisfying thing. It's kind of like a fidget toy almost, as well as a watch. Perhaps you could say that's the sixth function. So if you're getting tired of seeing the same kind of watches all the time and you want something completely different and unique, then check out the link in the description so you can see all the different versions they have. Pick the one that you like the best. But that's it for this one, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, something totally different. And I'll see you in the next one.